Shalom Aleichem. Okay, we are here in Svat. Shalom, welcome. My name is Sheva Chaya. My name is Sheva Chaya, and I am going to share with you a few thoughts about um, about the moment, about Tikkun Klali, um, about um, <clears throat> share with you a little bit about my experience now at this moment. Um, I'm going to share. I'm going to. I'm going to say for starters, um, just a couple of words. Who am I? Um, who am I to be here? I mean, the the lineup of the speakers in this event is um, off the charts in terms of um, you know how how would I be a part of this? Uh, I'll tell you my background in a couple of a couple of words, and how I got to this point of being so very interested in um, in Israel, in Hasidut, in Rabbi Nachman, in Tikkun Oklali, in in really believing deeper and deeper all the time um, of the the potential and the need for us to step up and, and be who we truly authentically are and, and bring light to the world, each and every one of us in our unique way. Um, so my story in a couple of words is that um, I, I grew up in, in Denver, Colorado, and I had um, no plans to come to Israel, no dreams to come to Israel, really no education um, beyond lox and bagels in, in, in Jewish life growing up. And I went to an Ivy League college. Um, what that means now is, is um, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know even what to say about it. But coming from that place of um, going to Princeton, I, I being on the East Coast, I met some people, a lot of um, friends and Jewish people who were coming and going to to Israel. And I came to Israel. Um, that opening up for me. And and ever since I came to Israel, then I wanted to be in Israel as much as possible because I noticed, I felt there's something unique. There's something unique in the people here, um, seeing the Jewish people alive, Am Yisrael Chai, seeing the Jewish people um, living in, in so many different varieties of um, colors, shapes, and form of what, what a Jew could look like, and, and how deep this tradition really is, and, 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 and uh, far spread, how, how wide it can reach. And when I first came, I had zero um, Hebrew. I didn't know the Aleph Bet. If you showed me the letters of the Aleph Bet, I wouldn't have known what they were. And and uh, I had no background learning, but I did have a an inquisitive, curious mind, and I and I wanted to learn whatever I could. And a good friend took me to um, to some classes in Nachlaot in Jerusalem in Yerushalayim. And in those classes, I started to get introduced to to Hasidut which suddenly made me realize that we have a tradition that is not some like old school, not relevant, um, you know, crusty old religious system. Um, it's, it's as alive as alive can be. And the teachings that we have um, at our fingertips, the, the resources, the treasure chest of resources that we have as a people is is endless and it's so deep and it's it's so real and it's so relevant and it's so important to to tap into it in order to really be a person what does it mean to be a person um to to be a, a person who's who's a person who's refining themselves who's growing who knows that there's always more steps to take that, that we can that we can go further that we can do more we can um, become more and more authentic more and more real more and more present in our lives and, and that that matters, that, that we can have an effect on the world. And as much as I had a, um, a very strong education growing up where I grew up in the, in the States and going to an Ivy League school, there was nothing like this that I learned. This is a completely different realm. So that as we know, they say at the, at the highest level, going to the highest level of academic learning, that's the beginning of spiritual learning. And I really experienced this you know, firsthand, really feeling in such a very real and deep way that learning um, Hasidut, learning the, the teachings of the tzaddikim, s starting by the Baal Shem Tov, going further back even, in, in obviously there's many, many, many tzaddikim throughout the generations, but getting into Hasidut, starting with the Baal Shem Tov and his students, uh, the del delving into these teachings could literally give a person their life. It could give a person a 
um, a, a way to, to look at themselves, consider what's really possible in life, and come to understand uh, what is this? What is this life? What is all, all the challenges that we go through in this world and that are so vast and so confusing and so overwhelming? And, and when we have Hasidus, when we delve into Hasidus, so we, we, we get, a, we get a, a direction. We get to get a clue of, of what to do with all this energy that we have, what to do with our gifts, how to refine ourselves. And so I got really inspired there in Nachla'od to, to continue to try and learn, even though I couldn't understand the Hebrew, I could understand the concepts explained in, in English. And this brought me to a very, very great uh, love of, of Rabbi Nachman, of Breslov teachings. Why? First of all, it was uh, accessible, and I was, there were classes available in English. And also, once I started to learn Hebrew and start to try to read the Hebrew, I could actually, um, I could actually read um, the Breslov teachings easier than anything else that I could find. Maybe it was a soul thing, but I think it's also on purpose that way that it's, it's, it's accessible. It's why? Because we need it. And the subject of, of this gathering, this of learning together that we're doing is Tikkun Aklali. And Tikkun Aklali, I'm sure it's come up with many of the speakers explaining what it is and about it. But just in two words, there's, a, there's our 10 Psalms from, from David Melech, which said together, they basically encapsulate all of the types of songs in Tehillim, the 10 types of, te of a song that are in Tehillim. And, and by reading these songs, by, by singing them, by saying them, by praying them, we, it's, it's, it's a very, very strong move to make. It's a very, very strong remedy to bring to the world. And it brings wh uh, what's called a tikkun klali, a, 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 a full fixing. And if we're looking into the depths of what it means to be fixed, what it means to be who we truly are, so we need to go back to some of the most basic things ever that we learn about anything that we're doing, any efforts that we're making in trying to grow, in trying to um, make the world a better place. Uh, it all matters where we're coming from. And it says very, very clearly in the Torah, it says very, very clearly also in the Hasidus of, of Rabbi Nachman, that um, simcha, joy, is key. And without joy, nothing goes, actually. Uh, a, a, um, a person with simcha is able to receive Ruach HaKodesh. A person with simcha is able to understand things, have an open heart, connect in a way that, they're, that someone who's not the simcha is not able to do. And this is very connected to the Tikkun Klali. This is why I'm bringing it up, because if we speak about Tikkun Klali on a, on a most, um, say, surface level, it's talking about tikkun of breed, tikkun, the tikkun of of um, <coughs> of sexual impurity, of of coming to a place where things are are right, things are are um, in the right place and done in the right way. And what does that really mean? The whole basis of of coming together, of of people coming together, of of of. Um, of, of the yesod, of relationships, the basis of this is family, right? And family is, is based on, on a relationship between a man and a woman, and in order for things to be really, really right, there needs to be a lot of joy, there needs to be a lot of simcha. And the, the, when there's a person is in a place of simcha, they're protected, they're surrounded by, by a, a holy light, they're, they're, they're given clarity, they're able to receive and understand what's going on in the world so much better. So one of the first things I want to share about this, it's just so beautiful, first of all, that there is such a thing as, as a fixing, as a remedy. Just that, just to take that in. Just breathe that in, that there, there is a fixing. The world is so upside down, and so there's so many challenges. And if we really start looking into the details of, of, of things and trying to figure them out and make it work out, it can literally make a person... God forbid, feel like there's no way. And yet, we know because we trust in the tzaddikim and we trust in, 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 um, in their teachings and what they say, that there is a fixing. And the fixing has to do with, with these songs. Now, the psalms of, of uh, David HaMelech, they're all songs. Psalms are songs. And we really should sing them. 
we really should be ins inspired to sing them. And the the basis of of the Psalms is, are the are the writings of David Amelech. David Amelech, <coughs> David Amelech being yes, also a warrior, a king of Israel. He was also a poet. He's also a musician. And the <coughs> the spirit of Mashiach is on David Amelech. David Amelech is David Malka Mashiach, the spirit of Mashiach, and and the strength of David Amelech. David Amelech is a, an incredible story because in the, in, in the first something like 20 years, almost 20 years of his life, he had it the worst. Why? Because he was considered a mamzer by his own family. He wasn't, he wasn't accepted. He was, he was sent out in the, into the field with the, with the sheep to take care of them because he was considered as like a, a, a lost, lost cause, not worth anything. Um, the runt of the of the family and and when it came time for <clears throat> for Shmuel Navi to come and, and anoint the, the new king he came to Ishai the father of David Amelech and they they had uh, six other sons and he said one of your one of your sons is 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 meant to be the king of Israel and they went through each one of the sons until they real, went through each one and he said, no, none of these are shayach, none of these are the king to, meant to be the king of Israel. And he said, well, that's it. How could it be? And there's nobody else. And he said, no, there must be somebody else. He said, oh, well, you know, that David, that David is in the field with the, with the sheep. There's no way that it's him. And Shmuel and Navi said, bring him to me. He wanted to talk to him and he wanted to check. And he realized, actually, this is, this is a person with a huge soul who was for so many years at the beginning of his life treated as if he was worthless and had to go through that experience, which is part of it. And he became the king of Israel. Not only that, he became one of the greatest warriors of Israel. And he killed Goliath. He was a little scrawny teenager, so to say. And he came up against the biggest monstrosity of a, of a, of a being that all of Israel was afraid of. And what happened when David Amalek stood up to, to Goliath? And he and he wasn't scared, and he and he fought him. The ruach, the spirit, the um, becoming aliveness that happened with David Amalek doing that awoke in all of the people. It awoke in the in the whole Am Yisrael, and Am Yisrael got up and became strong, and became united, and chased the Philistine, chased the 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 Palestinian, the Philistine, out all the way, all the way north, beyond, beyond, beyond uh, where they were and, and uh, got rid of them. So this awakening of, of Ruach, of Gevura, the strength of, of our people is very, very intimately connected to, to David Amelech. This example of us and uh, of the Jewish people, of the king of the Jewish people, and we know that we are all one soul. So if you think about it, take that in just for a moment, we're all one soul, Am Yisrael is all one soul. So if we're all one soul, we all have a, a piece, we all have a, a spark of David HaMelech in us. And, that, and it's said that the teachings, the, the writings of David HaMelech, the Psalms, the songs of David HaMelech, they speak on, on many levels always. <coughs> and, and the levels are that, yes, it was a song of David himself, and the song of every single person who, re who reads that psalm. Every single time you read a psalm, it's, it has meaning for your own specific life. And it has meaning for the Klal of Am Yisrael, all of Am Yisrael together. So this level of being tapped in to sing a song, to sing songs to Hashem from every single circumstance, 10 different types of songs, everything that happened to David Melech, which was not simple what happened to him because he went through so much in his life as it's expressed by how his life began and step by step throughout his life, he went through everything again and again and again. And one of the most beautiful things to know about the Psalms of David HaMelech is that they all end with a positive note. And even though David HaMelech went through so much, he always went to a place of emuna, of having faith, of joy, of knowing there's connection, of, of calling out to Hashem and trusting and knowing that Hashem is going to save him. And this is a model for us on a, on a level of every single Psalm that David HaMelech wrote. And then Rabbi Nachman came a couple hundred years ago and put together the Tikkun Klali, taking from the Psalms, and it's a well-known thing that many tzaddikim tried to find these ten Psalms, 
that were the this like um, tamtzit, like a, a a a smaller taste of the entire psalms brought together in ten psalms. And Rabbi Nachman was the one who was able to bring it down, to reveal it, to find it. And and the this spirit of ruach of strength that we're talking about, this in David Amelech, right now specifically, we're we're living in times where it's so so vital and so so important for the for the life of Israel, for the life of the whole world, because the the world is really really affected by where where we we are holding. So in this moment, as we saw on the the, the war with Hamas at Sardan Simchat Torah an awakening the Jewish people, an awakening of gevura, of strength. You know what it's like when a lion, a lion, we know a lion is the, is the king of the, of, the <coughs> of the jungle, but when a lion is taking a nap, they take a very nice nap. They sleep really, really comfortably. They are out for the count. But when it's time for a lion to wake up, and protect his family or to hunt or whatever it might be it can go from zero to a hundred in a split second and this is what we see in in the spirit of Am Yisrael since Simchat Torah this awakening in the Jewish people on many levels is is like this lion waking up a lion that's it that would look like the world oh look it's just like a little pussycat taking a nap over there he's not going to do anything he's just asleep and then when our it, actual existence was, was threatened and 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 um, affected, uh, massacred by these rishayim. We woke up. We started to wake up. And what happened? Organization of of the of the reserve of the army of the IDF. And usually, you know, we have an example of of what happens in countries. Like, for example, you have in Russia. I don't know how many billions of people live in Russia, but it's a lot of people. And they're raging, waging a war on the Ukraine. How, how many people they drafted actually came to the war? I don't know numbers, but so many people ran away. They didn't want to join the, the army. And then now, why, why doesn't the war go anywhere over there? Because what are they fighting for? What do they even want to fight for? Those who are, are in the army, they don't want to fight. They have no purpose in their fight. But, but the Jewish people, this spirit of, <coughs> of, of uh, having a purpose, being the warriors of light against darkness in the world, gives us this purpose, and it allows us to continuously overcome everything that we need to overcome. And we see that our weapons are on a lot of levels. Yes, the IDF, when they drafted the IDF, thought maybe 100% would come, maybe 110%, something like 150% people came, people came who weren't even drafted from all over the world. The percentage of Jews in, in Israel rose 3% since the war started because people came from all over the world and there are 400,000 reservists uh, on, the, on the lines here fighting for Eretz Yisrael. What is this spirit that we're living and that we're, we're having the incredible schut to see and experience? This is the spirit of a Jew, the spirit of, of someone who has a soul that is tapped in. And a soul that's tapped in is not just going to sit and feel tapped in and, and, and live their own life and not get involved with the world. A soul that is tapped in is, is, is going to, to sing, is going to sing songs, is going to, is going to look for fixing the world, it's going to look for making the world a better place. And we see this across the board, even though we don't agree on everything, there's definitely a lot of opinions flying. The Jews, we want to help, we want to make the world a better place. And this strength of David Amalek that's in each of us, is rising and it's an amazing thing and we really need to capture it and and make the most of it so saying in the simplest of terms saying psalms singing the psalms even better than just saying them saying it singing it is awakening the spirit of mashiach in us as individuals in the spirit of mashiach actually and connecting us back to david amelech and what's happening in when we're saying psalms is that we are bringing together worlds because the emuna, the faith that's in us that we want to express is being expressed through words, through speaking, and through singing. And by speaking and singing, we're actually bringing out into the physical world with the breath and the and the and all of the everything that's involved there with speaking. <coughs> we're bringing out into the world a koach. The world, as we know, is, is built on 
the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The, the world is, is built on Aleph and Beth and Gimel. So when a person starts to speak and says words, holy words, they say Hebrew words. The Hebrew words coming out of a, it's 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 a it it makes reality shift because the letters themselves are the building blocks of reality of 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 the living world. And I'll bring you one other little pasuk now, <coughs> and and then I'm going to go a little bit more into what I want to share with you. <coughs> which um, we have a little bit more time. So there's a pasuk, is one of my favorite pasukim in the in uh, the the morning prayers of Shachri, where it says uh, around the prayers of, of the Shema, it says Hashem Machadesh B'Kol Yom Tamid Breshit, which means that God is is renewing, is making new um, all the time, constantly the workings of creation. Meaning everything, 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 down to the last detail of every last little thing is new always. It's fresh. Like like if you've ever seen like uh had the school to see a baby being born or a leaf opening on a plant, something new. The newness of that is giving us the tiniest little taste of, of the truth of reality, because reality is always being created. And when, if and when we choose to tap in, like we're doing now, joining this festival, deciding to learn Torah, deciding to come together in Achdu for Am Yisrael and for the world, <coughs> then we, we are making this newness of creation, of reality that we're in, in this moment, because right now is new, we're making it holy, we're making it connected, we're making it a time of dvekut with Rebona Shalalam, we're making it a time where we're saying the most the deepest things that we ever wanted to say and uh, that our souls want to say because this is the words of, of the Psalms of David HaMelech he spoke from the, the depth the depth of his soul and this is a very very great tikkun so <coughs> so we spoke about uh, I want to talk a little bit about the the ten the fact that there are ten Psalms in in tikkun HaKlali so it's a nice round number ten and it brings us to another teaching of, of Rabbi Nachman, <coughs> which is actually a story of Rabbi Nachman, the story of the seven beggars. And it's a long story, and you're probably familiar with it, but in case you're not, I'll give you the most uh, quick little taste of, of the story of the seven beggars. Basically, there is a, there is a, a king who wanted to, uh, a king of, of, of the world who wanted to hand over his power to his son in his lifetime. And he told his son on this theme, no matter what, you need to stay happy. When you become the king, you have to stay happy. And if you're happy, and you, uh, for good reasons, and you're happy, that's great. I'll also be happy because you're happy. But if you're sad and things don't go your way, so you, you still need to be happy. And if you don't stay happy, then you will lose, your, you will use, lose the throne. And I'll still be happy because things will still be right, because you need to be happy for, th for you to be on the throne. And just like he said, this happened, and there was a big turmoil in the world, and people were moving everywhere, and a, and, a, and a couple of young little kids, a boy and a girl, were lost in the forest. And they stayed together, and they started to get hungry in the night, and they started to cry because they were so hungry and they needed bread. And every night, a beggar would come to them and give them some bread. The first night, a blind beggar, the second night, a, a deaf beggar, and so on and so on through, through the nights. And each time they would give them some bread, and, and when they got the bread, they would, they would say, I'm giving you this bread, and I'm also giving you my gift. And the, each gift, there's a lot of different learnings in each of them, but each one goes through in giving the gift. And eventually, this, this, these two little young beggars grow up, and they decide to start begging in the cities, and they start to get to know the other beggars, and the beggars say, hey, we have a great idea, this is a great shidduch, let's bring them together they'll get married, and, and when they get married, they needed to throw a, a, a wedding for them in Sheva Brachot. And during the Sheva Brachot, every day of the seven days of the, she the Sheva Brachot, the, um, the beggars would come to them and visit them. And the, be the beggars who came to visit them, um, each one were the ones that came before, and they would explain to them <coughs> more about what they what they had told them when they were um, when they had met them in the first place, and they told each one of them their story. 
So the last beggar that, that Rabbi Nachman talks about and explains is the beggar with no hands. And to jump forward in, in the kids or in the story, there's, a, the, there's a, a, a whole other story within a story within a story. But basically there's a, there's a king, again, who has a daughter. And the, the daughter <coughs> runs away and she has to hide and, he, and he, he wants her back. She runs away from him and he wants her back and he sends soldiers to go after her shooting arrows at her. And she comes to a water castle and she's, she's going around and around the water castle and <coughs> the, these arrows are being shot at her and he explains there, this is the point of the story I want to share with you, explains there that there are ten types of, po why are there ten types of arrows? Because there are ten types of poison. Each one has its unique <coughs> type of poison and if she were to be hit by all ten types of poison, this would kill her. And <coughs> the beggar with no hand says that he can, he can heal her because with each ten of the ten types of poison, there are ten types of, of cures. The cures have to do with ten types of tzedakah and ten types of song. And the ten types of song remind me very much of the tikkun aklawi. <coughs> Why? Because there's ten songs. So the ten types of song are related to the ten types of, of what, could, what could hurt a person. So the ten types of song could be a cure for each type of different types of sadness or being feeling disconnected. And <coughs> so taking just sharing you with this this with you because it's it's a basis of, of the idea behind the, the Tikkun Klali that songs are healing. And I don't even know how how to emphasize enough how important it is in these times when we're living in these times where it's so, so important to stand up for truth. And it's so, so important to not fall into sadness and not to fall into, into yeush and, and not believing that we can do anything, even though it's so confusing to know what to do. We, we can't fall. We can't fall. We need to stay in the realm of joy and we need to keep lifting up. How do we do that? By singing. And singing the song, singing the, the, the ten songs of Tikkun Klali is always a wonderful way to do this. And singing to God in your own words is yet another beautiful way to do this. And bringing these different types of singing together where a person can really let themselves get to a place, they can find a place where when we say the words <coughs> of the Psalms of David Amelech, that that those words of the song are coming through like they're my own words. Like it's the deepest expression of my own soul, even though I didn't, I didn't write the words. It's speaking something deeper than I ever even knew about myself. And not just speaking, but singing. And the basis of that, I want to say one other little thing, I have like two minutes left. The, it, I want to say that the, the basis behind all of this that we said, the strength of, of the Psalms is that that, that inner push, that drive, that inspiration of, of the soul of a human being, how does it actually come out and express itself in the world? Is through speech, is through words, which is the Psalms, their, their, their words and their songs. Behind speech, without breath, there's no speech. And it's part of, part of the mechanism of being able to speak is, is breath, is, is breathing. So, <coughs> The, the breath, and I, I want to end with this to really encourage us all to keep breathing. Because <laughs> we are living in times that are making us hold our breath. They're making us, not, what's happening on so many angles, what's going to be, um, and, and not knowing what to say, and not knowing how to react. It's so overwhelming. The, the cure to this big, big, big challenge is to keep breathing. Why? Because when you keep breathing, you keep present. And when you breathe deeply, taking a deep breath through your nose, and you breathe out slowly, the whole nervous system reacts. It slows down. And this can allow us to actually know who we are and actually know where we're coming from and actually sing and express ourselves with truth. The words of Tikkun Akali, the words of David Amelech, the words of our own Hidvodudut, of our unique expression of each and every one of us coming through us it, however it comes through uniquely in each and every one of us. So I want to encourage us all to, yes, say Tikkun Aklali, believe in the great fixing the, that's coming to the world because it is to keep breathing, to keep singing, 
to choose to be a part of this uh, great, great light of redemption coming to the world as this ugly darkness is coming up. The opportunity to shine light and make the world such a beautiful place is imminent. It's so strong. And Bezad Hashem, Naseh we should We should see the Geula Shalema. Thank you so much.